If you've never heard of the 100 Envelope Challenge or you want some inspiration to help you get started, then you've come to the right channel. In this video, I will be decorating eight card holders. Hi guys, I'm Kraken Christine and I'm going to be decorating my card holders for the 100 Envelope Challenge to help me save for Christmas. Now to help me stay on course during this challenge, I will be decorating my card holders as I go. This way I don't lose interest and I get a chance to craft. I created some printable savings trackers so I can record how much money I am stuffing into my card holders. All right, let me go over how this works. There are many variations to the rules. The one thing that does stay consistent is you need 100 envelopes. Now I'm using top loader card holders I got from Amazon a few years ago. I want to try and keep my costs down as much as I can. That way I can save more. The most common way of playing the challenge is to take your 100 envelopes and number them 1 through 100 so each envelope should have a number on it. Then you take your cards and mix them up. This way they're not in numeric order. Next, place your envelopes into a box. You can use any type of small box as long as your envelopes can fit. Keep in mind you will need a little extra room because you're going to stuff the heck out of those envelopes. Once you have all of your envelopes situated in your box, you will randomly pull an envelope. When you pull an envelope really depends on how aggressive your goal is to save. You can pull an envelope on a daily basis, once or twice a week, or on every payday. Once you pull an envelope, the number on the card is the amount of money you will stuff into it. So if you pull an envelope with the number 100 on it, you're going to need to stuff $100 into it. It would be best to check your budget to see how much extra money you have to save before you get started. This way you'll have realistic expectations. Depending on the duration you choose for the challenge, you'll keep pulling and stuffing your envelopes until there are none left. If you play the 1 through 100 envelope challenge, you will have saved $5,050. That is definitely the more aggressive way to save. Since I'm trying to squirrel money away for Christmas and I only have a couple months left to do it, my goal is about $500. So stuffing 100 envelopes with $5 to $10 each won't give me any anxiety and I can sleep at night. Before I go any further, I want to take a moment to go over how I'm decorating my card holders. I like to make them look like gift tags. This way I can reuse them when I'm done with the challenge. A few things I can use them for are of course gift tags, but I can also use them for my junk journals, altered book projects, bookmarks, 
thank you cards, handmade Christmas ornaments, or I can sell them here online. All of the items I am using are materials that I've collected over the years. As a crafter, I have a lot of this stuff on hand. If you would like to get your hands on printed paper and embellishments, you can find them at your local hobby store. Hey, speaking of selling online, as a side hustle, I sell items on eBay and here on YouTube. You can join me and some of my friends for a live sale. We sell anything from vintage to modern, new and gently used items, especially holiday themed items for Christmas and Halloween. I even sell jewelry too. I'll include some of my links to my upcoming sales down in the description area. All of the money I earn is used for my savings challenge. Make sure to subscribe and click the ringing bell so you'll receive a notification when I schedule a sale or I upload a new video.
100 envelope challenge can be used to help you save for something you really want to do, like going on vacation, buying a car, paying off a small bill, or if you're looking into Dave Ramsey's The Seven Baby Steps. This can help you with step one, which is to save $1,000 as fast as you can. Well guys, that's it for this video. I hope this helped to inspire you to get started on your own 100 envelope challenge. If you have any questions or comments, please type them down below in the comment section. Don't forget to smash that thumbs up on your way out and I'll see you next time.